throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies, we see the greater themes, the greater arcs of the stories in our lives playing out, and we go as guided. And no surprise, the energies were in a new month. It's the month of December of 2023. And the energies, this culminating point, I've been grappling with what is the energy of these, of this time, because it's not an ending, it's not a beginning, it's, it's a culmination point, it's this crescendo, and, there, and, and within it all is why I'm grappling with what the energies are, not the clarity of what the messages are, they're very clear. It's just, it's not an ending, it's a beginning in that sense. And yet they're, they're contained within each other. And that's, I guess that's the, the quandary that, that we find ourselves in is the ending of an age, the ending of a time, the beginning of one, and what that looks like, feels like, and so forth. So welcome everyone, welcome Jennifer, welcome Ava, welcome Olivia. As you're joining from around the globe, say hello in the comments. And remember, we incorporate your comments and questions live throughout the broadcast. So because there's so much, where I'm just going to jump right in. We have this, we're, we're working with one of our, uh, one of the heavy hitters in the planet. So just astrologically, we are dealing with Neptune. And today, Neptune stations direct. Neptune is the eighth and the most distant planet in our solar system. And it is the only planet that you cannot see with the naked eye. And so we speak a lot about what's unseen, what we have to use our other senses and faculties to discern, to receive, to understand. And so we're, here's Neptune. And remember, when a planet stations direct, there is a, an amplification of the energies both before it and after it. It's that analogy of the train coming into the station and how the platform vibrates and everything's, you really feel when a plane, is, a plane, a train, a plane, a train, when it's coming into the station, when it's arriving and when it's departing, you feel the energy, the intensity of it. So we're dealing with Neptune. And what's so very interesting is this standstill. Standstill is our theme. I'm gonna bring up our main theme here. And it's a, it's a doozy. It's a big one. And we're continuing with the image of the butterfly key with the illuminated crown chakra and that we are the key to the new, to what we've been seeking. So our main theme is stand still. The seed of prosperity hyphen advance. And how this word stand still is misunderstood. It has more than one meaning. And typically, you know, if you're a kid fidgeting around, they'd be like, stand still, you know, like, stop, immobilize. And stand still from uh, Merriam-Webster's dictionary, a situation or condition in which there is no movement or activity at all. So this, like, there's this nothingness, nothing's happening, this standstill. And that is somewhat of this perplexing energy that we're in. It's, we're not quite, we're not in the old, we're not in the new completely anymore. And so, and yet it doesn't mean that nothing's happening. It's the point here is everything's happening. I mean, everything's happening. The ending, the beginning, the, the transformation, the trans the everything is happening all at once in this standstill and this message to be ready to be ready to be ready to be ready welcome Lorna welcome Alicia so 
let's get into, I'm going to put my specs on, as I always say. Um, we're going to take a look at the main energies because it's fascinating how the astrology with Neptune coming to a standstill. Our main theme is standstill. Hexagram 12, December is 12. In the I Ching, the hexagram is standstill. So here's this, and yet it's not, and then we're going to have a much greater understanding of the meaning, which harks all the way back to the Israelites and the Exodus, and what the biblical meaning of standstill means. Fascinating. Just, I'm floored. So here we go. Let's look at our current energies, our main energies. So we have 12, which is standstill, and it's about release. It is about releasing what doesn't serve us, releasing the past, releasing this age, this era that we have been in. The one and the two become a three. Difficult beginnings persevere, meaning it's difficult in the beginning. We are literally transferring from one order of things, one age to another from patriarchal to matriarchal, from Piscean to Aquarian, and how that can be difficult in the beginning because it's new, it's unknown to us. We haven't been there before in this lifetime, and thereby persevere, allow, release. We have the six, which is today, and that conflict and destiny. Are we in the flow or are we in conflict with it? Are we embracing the new, the, the future, the forward advance, or are we trying to hold on to a bygone era? And this whole piece of let go, 2023 is a seven year, so we have everything we need, these armies and legions, this correct discipline, and is to be mindful that we are to act correctly, respond, don't react, proactive, not reactive embrace, not obstruct. Then we have, when you culminate, you can culminate in two different ways, all the numbers. It can become a 25 or it can become a 16. And you can see the synergy between them, the 25. Innocence, open to the way, be childlike, embrace the new, look for the awe and wonder in everything that you're encountering. And if you're, if you're encountering difficulty and challenge, look to the innocence of something. Look within and see, what am I not open to? What is blocking me from seeing it from, the most, from its most pure state? And then 16 is enthusiasm. Again, childlike enthusiasm, dancing, singing, anything, nature, anything that brings about enthusiasm. And it creates an excitement. It creates a joy, a happiness, and how that advances us and moves us forward. These are the main energies. Going right into the astrological influences, two things are happening. On Monday, this, this Monday, Venus enters Scorpio. So it just entered Scorpio. The bigger aspect here, and both are beautiful, the bigger aspect, of course, is again today, 12-6. Neptune stations direct at 24 degrees Pisces. And so this stationing direct is what we're dealing with. And the, the message there of overcoming, see, we're overcoming the obstacles. We're overcoming the past. We're overcoming where we've been. And the way to, the way through, the way, is to release, to allow, to go as guided, because arrive it, it will, arrive it does. And so here's this message, this standstill, and you can, I'm, I'm shaking, you know, kind of quivering my hand to, to mimic the energy of something that's quote unquote at a standstill and yet everything is happening. Welcome, Colleen. So let's go to, I'm going to share my screen really quickly, and we're going to look at this is from Pam Youngen um, on the North Point Journal. And she's talking about the Neptune effect. The planet Neptune, named for the god of the vast oceans in Roman myth, 
is a dominant influence in our lives this week. Neptune will come to a standstill on Wednesday, December 6, completing its retrograde phase and preparing to move forward through the zodiac once again. Um, when any planet, as she's talking about here, when any planet stations, we're, we're going to feel it more. There's a light and shadow effect to this. Shadow qualities tend to emerge, and so we're to be mindful to stay in the light, stay in the higher octave, the higher mind. Neptune is also the planet of the imagination, visualization, and creativity. Under its heightened influence, we may find meditations to be especially uplifting or inspiring. An altered state may be easier to access, and intuition and other clear senses may, uh, can be more active. For artists, the ability to tap into one's creative muse may be strengthened. So we have this beautiful, because Neptune can also involve things, as you're going to see here in a moment, of being, it can, uh, not obstruct, but uh, like fog. So we're not able to see clearly. So we have to go inward to see clearly. We've got to use our intuition, our higher minds, our soul source connection. Um, ultimately, the benefit Neptune inspires us to approach our existence from the perspective of the higher self or soul. When we do this, we view the world through enlightened eyes. This allows us to stay present in the moment, but not be caught up in the drama. It's about looking through the illusions. It's looking through the fog. It's looking through to see what's really happening. It's, it's not to stay on the surface. And it doesn't mean that we don't understand what is literally happening in the physical 3D senses. We can see it. However, it's never what it appears to be on the surface. What's really going on and how we can apply that in our individual lives, our relationships, our interactions. It's, it's never what we say it is. Because we often, we humans, often don't say what we truly mean or feel. We talk about the effects, the experiences. We talk about what we like and don't like. We don't say what, what is at the root of it. And this is where Neptune plays a, a beautiful role. And this transit, yes, is occurring now for so many, you know, weeks the stationing retrograde, stationing direct, and so forth. Yet this theme of standstill is playing out largely, hugely. Um, there are always spiritual growth and lessons, and she's talking about um, when working with Neptune, and the ones that, that Pam Youngins from North Point Journal uses to illustrate a Neptune transit is that of crossing a river in the fog. Imagine that, crossing a river in the fog. There are six key learnings involved in this scenario. First, we must surrender to the experience. Now imagine this crossing a river in the fog, but also changing eras, changing times. Literally, I mean time, big times, epics. From uh, one, two thousand, two, three, four hundred years to another era to the new era, this crossing the river in fog. And so first we must surrender to the experience because we cannot make the fog go away. You can't keep the new from arriving. And yet it's unknown to us. Next, we must release attachment to knowing the outcome. Because then we've got, if, if we're attached to an outcome, and think of this in, in any individual way, in our individual lives. If we're attached to an outcome, that is the experience we are going to have, the attachment to the outcome, not the actual empty vessel, the, the opportunity of receiving what's truly on offer for us. Because we can't, in the fog of that, we're attached to an outcome, so we're having the experience of the attachment to the outcome. We're not having the experience of, ah, what is unknown? What is the outcome that will present itself by me, in French, embrasser, to embrace, by embracing the new? Third, we must learn to have faith, faith that is a higher plan at work. 
even if we cannot see it in the moment. See, it's a faith about knowing the master weaver, this divine orchestration, the magnificence of it, the purity of it, the greatness and goodness of it. And all we need to do to receive that is to be open to it, to not be attached to the outcome, to not cleave to the past, to not cleave to what we know. Is that scary for human beings? Absolutely, yes. But that doesn't mean that it is not a higher plan at work. Fourth, we must build trust. Trust that the, flo- the, the fog will clear. Trust that there is a shore on the other side. And trust that although we cannot see our progress, we are actually moving toward that shore through the fog. It's like we made it through the rain. It's Barry Manilow's song in my head playing. We made it through the rain. Um, fifth, we go into the cabin of the boat and watch the navigational dials, which represents going within and letting our intuition guide us. See, it's about soul source connection. It's about while we see what appears to be our, our known world and our lives and everything we know crumbling in that chaos and conflict and this, and this cleaving to the past. Because that patriarchal patriarchal Piscean era, there are those that don't want that to end. But end it must. And again, it's taking the very best of it with us. It's about standing on the shoulders of giants. Apply that same understanding to your individual lives. It's not about throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It's not about you know, demonizing ourselves and so forth. It's about releasing what no longer serves, being open to go as guided and to go into the cabin, to go inside, to connect with that soul source connection with your soul that has been so patiently waiting for this time to lead, to lead. It has always been guiding us. Now it will guide and lead. And sixth, we listen for the foghorn, which is equivalent to tuning into higher guidance, because our higher guidance is going to prevail. It's just a fait accompli. And this, because we've been in in the patriarchal Piscean, it has been about thought, ego, mind, personality, the uh, the will, the, the, the creative force, leading. Matriarchal, Aquarian, is receptive force leading. And again, remember, the receptive force is the harmony, the balance, the beauty of the two. And it's the Mazda rotary engine, the ego mind personality, the heart, the higher mind, the soul, all in unity, all in unison. It's not a piston. It's not a piston engine going up and down. Ding, ding, ding. Pistons go up and down. A rotary engine moves in a triangle. It's rotary. And so this is what we're talking about and how this standstill comes to play. So big, big, big energy. So now we're going to move into the, um, let me show you the Sabian symbols. We're going to move into the Sabian symbols. These are by Dane Radier, an astrological mandala. And they, again, tie to... Here's the, here's the natal chart for today, Na, uh, Neptune stationing direct in Pisces. And you will see Neptune kind of top just a little to the left. And you see it looks like the, the pitchfork. It's the trident. And it's at 24 degrees, Pisces. And remember, 2024 is a capstone moment. The capstone, the all-seeing eye, the higher mind. The again, the our um, our crown chakra being illuminated. It is a whole new way. It's it, it, it's. I was going to say it's as if what we've literally been. Remember, we've been the whole thing we've been going through, is the lower part of when you visualize a pyramid. The whole thing that we have been going through. Is the lower part of the pyramid. 
the climb, the ascent, to reach the ideal. This ideal of a utopia, of a harmony, a balance, where everyone has a place at the table and everything is harmonic and unified. We've been on the ascent, the climb of that. Now we reach the capstone moment, where the ideal is the new reality, where higher mind, soul source connection, this all-encompassing, and note that it's the triangle, the pyramid is the triangle, the rotary engine, where it's unified, it's higher, higher octave. That's where we find ourselves in this standstill where, and standstill biblically means, and we're going to come into all this, but let me just go there while I'm here, to abide, stand, stand fast, stand firm, continue, endure, to position yourself, to place yourself, and be ready to move forward. And you're going to see in, in what we're bringing up here about the Exodus and Moses was about being ready. Pull up the, the tent stakes, be ready to move. Why? Because they were moving from enslavement, the Exodus, enslavement, to the promised land, liberation, freedom, liberty. And this cease, biblically standstill, this cease all striving. See, we're climbing, we're climbing, we're striving, we're climbing, we're climbing, we're climbing. And this standstill biblically means because you're going to, you know, God, higher source, is going to deliver you. It's going to deliver us to the next, to forward, to the next era. So let's look back. Let me show you again the chart. And then we're looking at where uh, Neptune, pardon me, is stationing direct. And the Sabian symbol for uh, 24 degrees Pisces, which is 25, you advance in Sabian symbols, you advance at one degree. So Neptune is sitting at the 25th degree of Pisces for the Sabian symbol, and it is a religious organization succeeds in overcoming the corrupting influence of perverted practices and materialized ideals. The power of the soul to intervene in the personal life and to induce necessary catharsis, necessary release, change. And the necessary, it goes, um, the necessary centralization of the conscious attention and will, symbolized by the preceding picture, most often brings about negative results. So there was, when, what we're talking about here is ego, mind, personality, the individualized centralization of consciousness and will, individual consciousness, individual will, me, I, re can result, most often brings about negative results. Exclusivism, pride, jealousy, greed for power and wealth. Every man is a church that has the soul as its God, but most forget the soul and live according to dogmatic rules and habits, which not only have become empty of inner meaning, but very often have been perverted by the demands of the senses and the emotional nature, and by the ego with its rationalizing intellect. Remember, ego, mind, personality, it will beg, barter, steal, procrastinate, justify, all of these different things, and that the soul sits there so quietly, so peacefully, so passionately, waiting, awaiting us to wake up. A purging or catharsis is needed to restore not only fresh and creative spontaneity, but even more the contact with the soul and the God-ordained karma. See, there's a higher plan. There's a higher will. There is a soul source connection. There is the way. And it's all leading. It's the, it's the Dharma. And so this symbol leads significantly to the series of five symbols, which concludes the vast cycle. You see this concluding and beginning. Because the final consummation of the process of actualization of the potency inherent and inherent in the original creative act. So it's talking about the creative act. It's talking about the actual process of becoming 
and the consummation of it and the potency of it, this created, this original creative act requires moments of crisis and in all capital letters, purification. So this is a catharsis moment, this massive crisis, deconstructing, purification, so as to advance. As you, as we keep going on, you will see then that Saturn sitting, and then you'll notice, see the capstone. And when you look, you'll see the capstone, it's, you'll see one degree, so just about at 12 o'clock, just to the left of 12 o'clock is the symbol for Saturn at one degrees uh, Pisces. And you'll notice that it goes over to the top of the capstone to Mercury, sitting at five degrees, comes downward to Venus at, I believe, two degrees, and then comes back over. So there's this capstone, and there's also a, a secondary capstone, but not to get lost. We're going to look and look between Saturn, Mercury, and Venus, along with where Neptune is. So now let's look at Saturn, a squirrel hiding from hunters. The individual's need both to ensure his future subsistence and to protect himself from aggressive soul elements. Social, pardon me, social elements. The squirrel not only has to hide and store food for the winter, but to be on the lookout for the dangers involved in gathering this food supply. Social processes are always cast strong shadows. The individual is never certain of being safe among their fellow men. Once the process of individualization with its negative aspects, competition, social aggressi uh, aggressivity, and greed forces the breakdown of the organic tribal state of mankind during the archaic ages. What they're talking about here is the fact that here's the squirrel that is needing to protect itself while also receiving its nutrients, its nutrition, its nourishment, going out into the world. And how you can never be quite certain because, again, the ego mind personality has caused negative aspects, competition, social aggressivity, and greed, and these forces to um, not prevail but come forward. This symbol warns of the dangers of life and society during an era of exacerbated individualism when violence is a possibility never to be dismissed. The need for self-protection and caution is ever present. This is about being aware, consciously aware of your choices. It always comes down to choice. And yes, while we can see violence, a lot of violence going on in our current world, it's because there's exacerbated individualism. There's this, because again, it's, it is going away. So the threat of that, it's threatening. The ego mind personality feels threatened. It's not safe. And so it creates this um, exacerbated need to protect and it, in its shadow, it lashes out. And so it's mindful for us to remember, see through the illusion. Don't contribute to negative aspects and forces. Be mindful of your own ego mind personality choices overriding your soul choices. It's big, big energies here. Second Mercury sitting at the top. It's Capricorn six degrees. Ten logs lie underway. Uh, pardon me. Ten logs lie under an archway leading to darker woods. The keynote is the need to complete any undertaking before seeking entrance to whatever is to be found beyond. Remember in last week, the world before us, we're moving beyond where we've been. Here's the num number 10 is a symbol of completion. It symbolizes even more the revelation of a new series of activities just ahead. Yet unless the concluded series is brought to some degree of fulfillment, Nothing truly significant is likely to be accomplished by a, re by a restless reaching out toward the as yet unknown. It means we've got to finish what we've 
where we are, what we've started, where we, and this is where Pluto is playing that huge role that not since the industrial, the French and American revolutions. So it's completing, we're completing this era. Number 10 is a symbol of germination, but the seed, number nine, must have matured well. No natural, and so in order for us to mature well, we have to be looking, we have to be willing to look at what's not pretty. What's, what is the lesser attributes of where we've been of this 2000 plus year era? No natural process can be accelerated safely beyond certain limits. So again, there's a process, there's a divine will, there's a divine um, master weaver at hand here. This symbol establishes a foundation for what will follow. Here man reaches a threshold in which he may have to pause, stand still, who may have to pause in order to safeguard their further advance. We're in this standstill period of where we've been and where we're going. And this need, this, and need meaning need to be ready, to be, to make the choice that says, I am ready to advance. And let me just bring this up because it's, it's right now, it's our mantra. This is an image of Moses saying, and our mantra is, I am ready, exclamation point. It's not negotiable. It's not for sale. I'm not on the fence. I am ready. I am ready to advance. I am ready to release. I am ready to embrace. I am ready to listen to my soul source connection. I am ready to lead with my soul. I am ready. It's powerful because in this standstill, it is about being ready pulling up the tent stakes to advance. So as we continue, we're right at the threshold, which is why it's like, quote unquote, it looks like nothing's happening and everything's happening. Venus then, a house raising party in a small village enlists the neighbor's cooperation. The feeling of community demonstrated in a basic joint effort. This harks back to the one of the very best essences and energies of the patriarch. Because remember, way back, pioneer days and, and forward, in rural neighborhoods, especially as the American West was being developed, the building of at least the framework of a house was often a collective, friendly enterprise. Newcomers building their home-to-be found friendly helpers in their neighbors. The sense of togetherness and participation in a common enterprise was developed by such collective works. The home remains, quote, our home, the, the individual um, homesteading coming, the, new, the newcomer, yet the whole community is involved in its erection and the welcome marking its completion. See, there was harmony and unity and goodness. There was this era, this time, where you helped your fellow human, your fellow neighbor. At this stage, feeling becomes activity. The past and its memories are repolarized in terms of the expanded social consciousness. From that activity, a new sense of reality will derive. The key word is cooperation. So this advance into the new, the matriarchal Aquarian age, it's all about unity, cooperation, oneness, kindness, goodness, this unity, this coming together. And there, the unseen is, is saying to me, and remember to look, to see this same exact thing within. How has your heart, your ego mind personality, and your soul been divided, disparate, 
un, un, uh, unequal? Where have you fought against yourself? Where have you not been a good neighbor to yourself, with yourself, let alone externally with others? Because unity, Mazda, triangle, capstone moment, rotary engine, it's about them coming into harmony and unity with one another internally as well. So, and last but not least before we move on, I've had this up for a few weeks now, and it's Isaiah 117. 117, 711, 117 represents the master's journey. It is the hero's journey. It is the fool in the tarot. This, and it, and that harking back to the innocence and the enthusiasm and the, the full faith and trust and going as guided. And it says, and Isaiah 117 says, learn to do right, exclamation point. Seek justice, encourage the oppressed, defend the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. See again, thousands of years ago, what God, higher source, spirit, source, and symphony is saying is, do right by one another. Be better. Use your higher mind, use your soul as the way to live. And we have fallen so far away from that, that we are now in this moment, Pluto, this cleaning up, all of this, Neptune, moving us forward, the standstill. We are having to deal, in order to advance, we are having to look at all of what is not pretty, all the fall, everything that has, that is the shadow elements of this. Why? Because it, as Master Jesus said to the apostles, you ask where you're going without knowing where you've been. We must know where we've been. It's imperative. We must know. We must see it. We must accept it, we must deal with it, and we must cleanse it. And, and then move forward, advance, move on from a purified state, a purified vessel. That's what we're talking about here. So now let's move to... Um, Ooh, God, I had to take a breath there for a minute. <laughs> so we're going to look, and this is just fascinating to me, um, and I'm going to lead with the one with Moses and um, the Israelites in Exodus. And I'm going to be reading from, um, this is from Scripture Nuggets. and. So please bear with me again. Any references are biblical references. It's always from a pure spiritual place. It's the backdrop of the story, of the truth, of the story. That's what is to be taken away. And let me, because, let me, let me just give you a few things with the unseen. The first thing they said about this week and this moment, and it's not just this week, it is this moment. And it's, it's huge. You can see my arms moving out. A great they said a great new landscape, and then they changed it to meadow or incorporated. A great new meadow, a great new landscape of discovery unfolds, quote, before us. And remember from last week, the world before us, the one that came before us and the one that is arriving, the one before us. So here, a great new meadow landscape of discovery unfolds before us with exclamation points. And Meadow and landscape. So landscape, any expanse of natural scenery that can be seen from one viewpoint, from a vantage point. Meadow is another word for hayfield, but offers a much more picturesque view as an open field of lush grass filled with butterflies and birds and room to run. It can also refer to a piece of land found along a river. Neptune, waters, the god of waters tributaries, 
clear water, salt water ocean. And then this bucolic scene. So again, Garden of Eden, Promised Land, bucolic. This lush grass filled with butterflies and birds with room to run. Childlike expanse, all these things. And there's this beautiful quote by Dale Carnegie that said, let us not get so busy or live so fast that we can't listen to the music of the meadow or the symphony that glorifies the forest. So again, it's, you know, they're giving it to me in the moment. This is a, a profound message of return, of coming home, of receiving a meadow, a landscape, a land, a place, a great place of discovery that unfolds before us. They said, secondly, they said, it's never too late to begin anew, to begin again, dot, 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 until it is. And that was underlined. So again, one can, we have been waiting, peoples have been waiting 2,000 plus years. And I, I have said this many times, I understand that. And, and biblically, it references that only the Father, no one else but the Father knows the time, the season, the when. And thus, what to be, to be, what the unseen is saying here is it's never too late to begin anew again until it is. So if you're on the fence, get off the fence. <laughs> if you're struggling with ego, mind, personality versus soul, surrender to your soul. You're not giving up. You're not going to cease to exist. You are simply surrendering to your soul. And your soul and soul source connection will guide you and lead you in a way that is beyond anything you've ever experienced. Because the ego mind personality, quote unquote, is the beast we know. And the beast doesn't, you know, like beauty and the beast, the beast doesn't have to be an adversary. The beast doesn't have to be hostile and angry and aggressive. It can be pure of heart and good. It's the lion. It doesn't, you know, the lion doesn't have to roar to be. We need a healthy ego mind personality in service to the soul. So, and because, and I heard red, white, and blue. Red is about valor and courage and readiness to sacrifice. It can also represent the blood that has been shed. White, purity, innocence, independent ideals. And blue, justice for all, vigilance, perseverance, watchful and strong. Where is all of this leading? Number four, deliverance, salvation. That's where this is all going. Um, so let me just jump in with some of your, Olivia was saying, those uh, who were slaves and didn't want to change never were allowed into the promised land, right? Because again, remember, when you say to God, spirit, source, symphony, higher, the all that is, you know, I know better than, than you. And remember with the Exodus, with the Israelites, the entire way, and it was not, this, this was a conversation, a, in a, an interaction that Jennifer and I had about, it's not a straight line. The Israelites were not taken the most direct way, the most direct route. They were taken in a, a more circuitous route. So, and the entire way, they were provided for. It was only when, after all of that, they're being provided for, water out of rocks, mana, all of the things they needed, that there was grumblings that said, well, we can't have this, you know, it's all well and good, as if, as if none of these miracles occurred, and we can't have this promised land. This is all make-believe or not really true, and we were, quote-unquote, better off with, uh, with Pharaoh. There was a wandering for 40 years in the desert because they were not to inherit the promised land, what was promised, because they lacked faith. 
And so again, look in, in your individual lives to see through the fog, through the illusions, to be on the surface, to see what's really on offer, and to know your soul chose to be here at this time for this reason, to receive it, to experience it, to play your role, to be harmonic, unified, one with yourself, soul source, ego, mind, personality, heart, soul, everything unified, and to authentically share, share meaning express, create, that, that beauty, those harmonic chords, that divine nature. I know it sounds ideal and certainly against the backdrop of, of this current happenings, you know, like just idealistic fairy tale. And yet, that does not mean it is not true. That does not mean it will not happen. And it does not mean that that is exactly why you chose to be here. It's You chose to be here to express that, to receive it. Um, so, um, I'll come back to, I'll answer Olivia's other question. I want to jump into this really quickly and then uh, Jennifer's comment. So this is again from Scripture Nuggets. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Exodus 14, 13. Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation, deliverance, salvation of the Lord, which he will shew you today. The purpose of this lesson is to shed some light on this verse so that we may gain insight on standing still and seeing the salvation of the Lord. Exodus 14, 1-31 tells us this interesting event. This chapter tells of one of the greatest miracles in history. It's the miracle of the opening of the Red Sea so that a nation could cross over safely. Red Sea, waters, Neptune, Poseidon, Neptune and Poseidon, Roman Greek. This standstill so that we could cross over safely and then continue on to the promised land. In 1 Corinthians, Paul teaches that the things that happened to the nation of Israel in the Old Testament were written for our admonition, pardon me, admo, admonition whew, because the ends of the world are upon us. The word ends refers to an end of a prophetic purpose, the end of a particular order or time or reason. The word world refers to an age. We are living at the end of one of God's prophetic purposes, and with the coming of Christ, a new and prophetic Christ, Christos, the anointed one, the light, a new and fresh prophetic purpose begins. The old order goes away, a new order arrives, there's a new beginning, a new purpose, a new experience. Verses 2-3. The Lord instructed Moses to encamp the nation before the Red Sea. There were mountains on each side and a hostile army behind them. God had so placed them there, them where there was no way of escape. In essence, it's the full faith and trust. It, it, it looks like it's all crashing in on them. It looks like they're going to be harmed, killed, destroyed, because there's an, an enemy behind them a sea before them, and mountains on the other side. There's, quote-unquote, nowhere to go. The only way to go is forward, to advance. Um, many modern-day saints would say that that was evil, the devil evil, or whatever, but it was God who put them there in this situation, not evil. Have you ever felt trapped in a need and in need of a miracle? We all have, right? Pharaoh reasoned, they are entangled in the land, and the wilderness has shut them up. The word entangled means perplexed, and the words shut up refer to being blocked and ready to give up. We can look at what's going on and feel entangled, but everything is directing us to see through, see below the surface, see, see through to our soul source connection that knows 
knows. Um, the future looks grim. Many are entangled in financial difficulties or marital upsets or immoral practices. Others in Bible study disputes are in Bible study disputes only to find themselves entangled in doctrinal issues that stops the flow of the Spirit of God. See, we become dogmatic. We become entangled. We are so ego mind personality in the moment that we are not standing back to see the real truth, the real, the pearl, the wisdom. Remember, it's an irritant in an oyster, a grain of sand, a, a, a pollutant that creates the pearl. So, um, Israel had known the power of God, but memories are short when a fresh crisis can, uh, comes. Previous deliverances are forgotten. Jesus never said that the path of faith was going to be easy. Our faith is going to be tested over and over. We seem to struggle when it comes to learning that God has the ability to meet every fresh trial. And whatever, and, and with great reverence, I'm just saying whatever your faith is, higher source, power, Buddha, Allah, God, in this story, we speak of God. I, the point is to receive the higher message, the higher wisdom, the truth. At the Red Sea, it appeared that God had deserted them. Appearances are often deceptive. What looks like death to us looks like victory to God. Verses 13, 14. The Lord through Moses gives a 50-word prophecy. 50 is the number of Pentecost. The first word was, fear not. Faith cannot rise in a raging heart or in a worried heart. The nation was in deep fear of either the unknown or of the pursuing armies. Look at us today, right now. 3,469 years later, I looked this up. <laughs> Give or take, because there's, there's, just, there's a difference in when did the exodus occur. But roughly, we're talking about 3,000 uh, 470 years ago. And then look today. The, those that don't want, the army, those that don't want the new to arrive. So there's deep fear of the unknown, what's arriving, what's coming, what's the age before us, what's the world before us, and the pursuing army, meaning I don't want it to change. You're not being set free. You're not going anywhere. We want this to stay the way it is. The Lord can do great miracles when the heart is quiet. Abraham needed God's fear not. Joshua needed it. Gideon needed it. Daniel needed it. The apostles needed it. There was a repetitive in this point of fear not. The second word was stand still, stand still. The Lord was now dealing with a restless spirit in the Israelites. Restlessness leads to recklessness, to trouble. We do things on our own when we get uh, restless. Faith must learn to be patient. When our future is at stake, we often get in a hurry. Stand still, avoid, stand still, avoid doing foolish things. Let God work out your future. The words stand still mean to position yourself, to place yourself, and be ready to move forward. The, the idea is get ready to pull up the tent pegs and be ready to move. A lot of times God wants to move us forward, but we don't want to move. This is, it's like we think that everything just is uh, immobile, like everything about our experience, our human experience, is about change. Everything. And it is to what degree are we in concert with that change? Meaning the acceptance of it, the willingness, the enthusiasm of it, the childlike on wonder of it, the hero's journey, the master's journey. 
because come it will. The change comes, period. So how do we surrender to that change? The third word was, see the salvation of the Lord. Remember that word, the word salvation also means deliverance. The message is, change what you see. See, when you change what you see, what you see changes. So perception, belief, the stories. The, the, we've talked about this so much. What are the scripts, stories, masks, labels, identities that we've maquillage in French, you know, we've applied to ourselves, that we've covered ourselves with? Well, we need to, un, we've got to unlayer all of that, lay it all down, change what you see. Don't see the blocks, don't see the blocks to your future. See the, the opening of the way. See, it's not about, again, because if we're cleaving, it's about opening to the way. See the deliverances. See what is before us. Some days it's hard to drive out unbelief because we see the negatives. Exercise faith in the positives. The fourth word was, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. I love this. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And it's Exodus 14, 14. This is a much needed word. In essence, God says, all fight, you keep your mouth shut. The unseen, spirit, source, and symphony, God, source, Buddha, Allah, the high, all, the all that is, knows all. We know little. So, I'll fight. You keep your mouth shut. <laughs> all too often we negate our faith because we talk too much. Unbelief and speaking negatively have robbed us of miracles. I once heard a Christian executive say that he has a motto on his desk that reads, quote, keep your words nice and sweet just in case you have to eat them. That was by Andy Rooney. We do have to eat a lot of our words sometimes. Faith does not struggle. Faith lets God win the battle for you. Real faith refuses panic. Remember, don't give God your battle plans. Ego, mind, personality here. Don't tell the unseen spirit, source, and symphony, the all that is, what the plan is, because that's your ego, mind, personality plan. The plan, the way, fights for you, opens for you. We just have to be in alignment and connect with it. The fifth word was, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak, until the, speak unto the children of Israel, that they may go forward. God tells Moses to quit crying. The word criest means to call loudly, to shout. Was God saying to Moses, don't you dare shout at me? Moses, speak to the people to go forward. First he says, stand still. Now he says, go forward. This is not a contradiction. Remember, the word to stand still was a word telling them to pull up the tent pegs and be ready to march. Now they are to go forward and start walking. This moment in time right now, this, this, this moment in time, I'm so, because I'm, I, it's like the ending, the beginning, the, the completion, the, the nothingness and the everything. This standstill, be ready, pull up the tent, tent pegs to advance, to move forward. And 2024, this capstone moment. The sixth word was, but lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. What a command. By the word of the Lord, Moses did just that. And the sea divided and the people walked over dry ground. See, it was like what appeared to be impossible, what appeared to be terrifying in the end. Because of the faith and because of the higher command the faith, the trust, was the parting of the Red Sea, the deliverance. Our troubles would soon be solved 
if we would use our God-given authority over our problems and, and spoke the, war, the word of the Lord. It is to see through the illusion of what the ego mind personality is telling you and to go as guided. It's speaking the word that empowers our faith to see miracles. It's what we believe. What we believe, we experience. Keep your words sweet in case you have to swallow them, in case you have to eat them. And it is that the moment that Moses obeyed the word of the Lord, something great happened. Verse 19 states, And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them, between Israel and the Egyptians, the Israelites and the Egyptians. The sea was no longer a problem, and now the enemy was no longer the problem either. God did something else also. The cloud, so fog, cloud, Neptune, the cloud that brought darkness to Pharaoh brought light to the people of God. It's always like this when we can believe. 1 Thessalonians says, 5.5 5 says, For you all are the, uh, the sons of light and of the day. We are not of night nor of darkness. For the enemy to touch God's people, they first had to, got, they first had to get God out of the way. So for the enemy to touch the, the people of God, they first had to get God out of the way. That means that our spirit, our soul, spirit, soul, sensitivity, our soul connection, there is a higher power, a higher truth that has to be moved out of the way in order to impact us. That can be an inside job. That can be that your, we, you, I, me, are choosing. Ego, mind, personality is choosing to do that. But the point is, higher source, God will never do that. For the enemy to touch God's people, they had to first get God out of the way. Pharaoh was in the dark about what God was doing for his people, for the Israelites. God keeps the devil in the dark about what he wants to do for you and your future. The Lord made a way through the sea and a way for Israel's future. What is the sea that is holding you back? There's, and sorry, and, the, and verse 24, the next morning the Lord looked over towards the enemy and troubled them. He knocked their wheels off, or might we say knocked their socks off. The enemy was trying to follow God's people through the sea. God doesn't like the enemy following his people. The opening of the sea was for Israel, not, not for its enemy. As a matter of fact, the enemy said, God fights for his people and not for us. Let us flee. The word that God gave to Moses was for the people of God and not for the enemy. And remember, the people of God, it's, we are all one. God has made this clear that the tent got bigger. Remember that the, the beautiful image of the tent exceeding? Here's the, here's the image. The big tent, the hot air balloons, the lifting up, that we have been made whole, made complete. The sacrifice paid for the sins. I know this is all very biblical, and however, it's the point. It's the point of the story is it has been this long. This era, this Piscean era, has been all about this story being told, being played out, and its completion. What happens after? See, it's like, what happens after? What's the unknown before us? The word of God that works for us works against the enemy. The water of the, rest, uh, of the Red Sea was life to God's people and death to God's uh, enemy. I believe that God is speaking to us today and saying, 
be ready to move into miracles. If you feel encamped in a difficult place, then seek the higher purpose to deliver you to the miracle that's intended. See through it. Pierce it. Don't be afraid of it. Surrender to it. Not surrender to the enemy or the, or the fear of it, but to your soul source connection, to that which is so powerful and divine that's so as to see through the illusion of it, so as to advance. What often looks like death to you looks like victory to God. Exercise your faith. Prepare yourself for the moving of God on your behalf. We are being moved. We are absolutely being moved to the world before us, to the great new meadow landscape of discovery that will unfold before us. It's never too late to begin anew and again, unless it is. And it is about red, white, and blue, the red, white, and blue, and there's many countries that their flags represent the red, white, and blue. Ancient Egypt, one was, the uh, lower Egypt was red, upper Egypt was white. They unified and they became, and they incorporated the two together. So we have Mother Mary, you see white and blue. Mary Magdalene, red. You have all of this red, white, and blue. Four, deliverance, salvation, the advance, the moving forward. That is a choice, and it is a soul choice and the soul choice. S O U L S O L E. That is what is before us. Powerful, powerful messages, powerful energies, powerful moment in time. Until next week, be well, be kind, be conscientious, and, and know that the message from the unseen is stand still, pull up the tent pegs, and be ready to advance. I love you all. I will, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't get to all of your comments in today's show. I will answer them in uh, the show thread on Facebook. Um, and just know I am so incredibly honored to be with all of you on this journey of discovery. It, it truly touches my heart in ways you cannot know. And um, what an incredible group of souls to be with. You are, you are all amazing. So I love you, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.